Alrighty, mealtime everyone and welcome back to X-Plane 12 and welcome to Munich where we're doing the Lufthansa Flight 410 which takes us from Munich here to JFK International Airport in New York City. This flight gets me particularly excited because first of all it's a really long haul, we never did a long haul here and second of all we are using the plane that is actually used for this flight and this is the A340 600 and um this is it look at it wow what a giant thing um if you first of all um look at this munich airport it, i mean this is a vanilla airport and it looks pretty good i mean these lufthansa signs here are missing and all that but this is pretty good actually um okay let's try to get the um the jetway connection here and then, 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 then ground handling window to the jetway. Yeah, that's basically it. And unfortunately, you cannot connect both jetways. That would be cool if you, because usually this is why on heavy gates you have both. That some the passengers from the first class get in here, and the passengers from the other class get in here. Uh, so yeah, never mind. Um, this is the airplane that we are using, and the cool thing is that if you look here, this it says it's the. Mönchengladbach, this is the um, airplane with the um, designation uh, Delta Alpha India Hotel India. And this is the very airplane that is used for the flight that we are doing, for the Lufthansa Flight 410. This is the plane. So uh, thanks to, I think it was Atrium, Atrium Liveries for um, making a livery for the exact plane that we are using today. That's really awesome. And, um, wow, again, what a giant thing. I, this is really cool. So let's, um, since this is the first time that we are going to use these, this plane on this channel, you, um, I'm going to go into it a little bit more detail. So there's no quick startup or anything. We're going to go through it step by step. Basically, it's a lot like the other Airbus. Oh, and one thing that I forgot to mention, of course, this is a um, add-on plane. This is not a vanilla plane, of course, and it's made by TODIS. I had a lot of good experiences with, with TODIS aircraft. So, yeah, it's, I think, it was the only A340 that's that's available for X-Plane or for any sim, for that matter. Though I don't know if uh, there's one for prepared. And the good thing is that I already know a lot of the stuff, how everything works with the um, TODIS uh, add-on thingy here and all that. So it was pretty easy to set up and, and uh, get going. Um, but you're going to see it's not really that different from any other Airbus. There are a little bit of, there are some differences here and there, but it's really minor. So let's let's get started and we go through everything um, along the way. Overhead panel. Yeah, now instead of two batteries, there are three. So there's battery one and there's battery three. And then there's an APU bed. I have no idea what it is, but I turn it on. Um, and until, instead of or one external power, we have two. So we are utilizing both, of course. Uh, the rest is, again, quite normal. Um, the emergency exit lights, crew, supply on, ground control for the voice recorder. And um, yeah, then we have, of course, our nav aids. Wait until the on bed is gone. Turn on the other one. And the third one, so that they can align. So that's all pretty normal. You can see the light stuff is also very, very normal. This is the anti ice section. Yeah, we're going through that. I think we're going to need the anti ice today, maybe. Let's see what's the weather in Munich. Not very great. Yeah, a lot of low-hanging clouds, and I think we are about zero degrees. Yes, so we def definitely need the anti ice. Okay, uh, yeah, again, it the cool thing is that if, if you used one of the TOTUS Air, Airbus before, you will find yourself um, having non, no issues with, with uh, navigating through everything. Weight and balance, takeoff performance, landing performance, the every tab, you have everything in here. And one of the best things, of course, is the, um, is the connection to SimBrief. You click on flight in it here on this AOC menu. Then data uplink in progress. I think if the um, flight plan uplink. And I think now you're all set. Yes, now it is. And now you're all set. You can go to your init page. You can see this is in here. This is in here. 
in the flight numbers in here, passenger numbers, cost index, wow, 168, wow, that's cool. Uh, flight level 360 is in here. You can do in a wind, you can do wind stuff as well. Ground temperature is not correct though. Um, zero degrees. Uh, yeah, no idea what's going on with that, but you can see everything's in here. Um, yeah, flight plan. Of course, the flight plan is in here completely, but not um, the departure arrival, although um, Simbrief already gave me a departure arrival. Um, wow. It's a long flight. It's a long flight. Um, I'm going to put in the departure and the arrival, but I doubt that we're going to use the same arrival when we get there. I think we will have to change it because the weather is changing. It's like nine hours from now. It's a nine hour flight. So, um, yeah. Departure simply says 8L. We're using the Olezo Q2Q. Olezo 2Q departure. Okay. Olezo 2Q. There it is. Then uh, we have that. That's really great. And Simbrief says we're arriving in New York. Uh, okay. Flat level, you can see flat level 370. And here's flight level 380. <laughs> there are several flight limits, as it would seem. In New York, Simbri says we're arriving on 22L. Okay. That's the shorter one of these two. Hmm. Hmm. Is 2.5 kilometers enough? I don't know. But okay, let's go for that with that for now. And we're arriving in the Park 3. Pa Oop, there was Park 3. Excellent. Um, Novia? Mm, no idea. Yes. Flight plan discontinuity. Of course, we need to have that. Another flight plan discontinuity. Okay, in the tempi. So then let's go to plan. And let's check it out. Um, Wow, a long ass flight. And then we go to Rosli, Capti, huh? What, what, huh? what is this? Am I seeing this wrong? Why are we using both of these waypoints? Does this make any sense? I don't understand this. Can we remove that? Yeah, that looks kind of kind of better. Okay. Hmm. Okay, that looks better. Good, then this is set. Okay, this is completely wrong. They don't get the cargo from Zimbri for some reason. Okay, um, 8.7 tons. Passengers 349. 8.7 tons cargo. So that's 4.3 and 4.4. Let's put in 4.3 here and 4.4 here. So that's 8.7. No idea why they are not using that in the um why, why they cannot import this from simbrief for some reason can import everything else unfortunately now our zero fuel weight and our um zero fuel weight uh, center of gravity uh, has changed so we have to put this in uh 
here, second init page. So this is now wrong. Um, yeah, that's that's strange. This doesn't work. I remember this used to work in the other Airbus from Tolus. So that's a bit strange. Okay. 229.1 slash 23.7. Okay, block views, that's correct, that's the same. That's a little bit of change, and then let's see. Okay, so now gravity turns it, and we have our performance here. 161, 173, and 178. Transition of the cheapest 5000, that is correct. Packs are on, this is also correct. Then we have flaps one up three point four and flex attempt sixty nine. Ah right. F sixty nine, that's the difference here. It's not sixty nine, you cannot just type six, you have to type F sixty nine for some reason. No idea. But okay, then we are all set here. Now there's a way to get some weather, and that is takeoff performance. Wind 72 at 4, runway 8L, that's correct. And there are anti ice, right. We're going to need anti ice, I think. In configuration 1F, air condition on. Okay, let's see if they get give us different values. 67, 74, 78, up 3.4. So let's, I, I go with these values here. Green dot 2, 244, up 3.4. 67, 74, 78. Okay, then let's use these. Uh, no. 167. 174. 178. Okay. Good. Then we have that and then we can um oh right altimeter 1023 let's dial this in here three Get this set, 1023 for this guy as well. So then we're all set with this, are the IRS are aligned. And then we are ready for, um, all right. This I should have put on. No problem. Then we are ready to start the APU. Oh, flip open. Okay, absolutely no noise on the outside. Interesting. If you use a veil, if you bleed goes on. Again, same procedure as you would do in an A319, A321, something like that. You can put on all these fuel pumps. And then we are ready to push out here. Ground services, ding, ding, ding. And the trucks can be... Um, right, push back. And, uh, oh, should probably disconnect the jetway. That would be helpful. EDDM. Charts. Airport. Ding, 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 ding. Airport info. Okay, so we are going to the eight left. This is this one here, which means we are pushing tail left. And then go through D N all the way to November, and then Delta Alpha One, 
Alpha 1, Alpha 2, and then on the runway. I think that's the way we are going. Okay, pushing to your left. This is some useful information. How far? Mm, 50 meters? 40 meters? I think 40. Okay. Then no. Push back tail left minus 90. Distance. Let's say 50. Eh, let's say 45. Let's start push back then. And then we can already put our engine mode selector into ignition. Ah, there he is. Wow. And now they lift us up. And then we have to disconnect the parking brake. Or release the parking brake, which does not work. With my um, throttle thingy. And then we can start engine number one. Oh. Seems to work. Cool. What a huge plane. Ui. What happens? We're sinking into the ground. Uh, okay. Hmm. Hey, not bad. With the 50 meter, 45 meters should have been 50, I think. Okay. <laughs> what is you doing? <laughs> ah, okay. Never mind. The, the angle was a little bit wrong, but okay. Now we'll set the parking brake. It we'll sets us down. And then we are ready. Oh, we are done with the pushback. Okay, one engine is uh, available, then let's start engine number two. And while we're starting all the engines, let's do some taxi preparations. Okay, here's the thing that's a little bit different. So this is okay, all the lights are the same. You go, this goes to taxi. Beacon light is already on, that's cool. And you notice that this says runway turn light and camera. This is because for this airplane, which is pretty big, you also have to set this these cameras here to taxi. And then you can see here on these screens, you can navigate with your wheel on the taxi line via this camera. This is, this is cool. I totally like that. Uh, you can love the reflections on the screen. This looks so good. And uh, yeah, are we standing correctly? Yes, we are. Okay, so that was the second engine. Let's start engine number three. And then, of course, flaps go to takeoff position, speed brake arm, RTO. And uh, yeah, I think then we are almost done with that. Two of the engines are running, a third one is coming. What a majestic plane. Okay, that's engine number three. Should be okay now. Any second, there it is. And then let's start engine number four. This is the thing, this is so cool. I don't know if you, if you saw that, that was very, very briefly. But what TOTUS does is if, you, um, if you're done with pushback and you're ready for taxi, they automatically set the takeoff trim for you. I'm always forgetting that in like the Phoenix or something like that, but they always set it for you. So this is this is very nice. I love that. I know my, some people might, might think, yeah, I want to do it myself. 
I don't know if you can turn it off somewhere, but um, yeah. Okay, then let's wait for the last engine to start. And there's a veil. Alrighty. Then I think we are ready for taxi. We need the parking brake. And uh, yeah, you don't have to do anything. The thing immediately starts rolling because um, yeah, I think four engines on idle. <laughs> but man, we are heavy. Right, take off config test. I'm going to um, skip the uh, flight control check because yeah, we don't have a working rudder. I know this, we know this, so yeah. Just braking a little bit here. Pretty tight corner. Don't forget, it's a huge... Oh, I forgot something. I just remembered I forgot something. While we are taxiing here, hope you can stay on the line for a bit. It's just, it needs so much corrections. Yeah. We can turn the APU off and we can turn the entire ice on because we wanted to use that. Oh, now it stays on the line. Cool. This is the uh, Munich airport here in X plane. This is nice. I'm not doing anything and it stays on the taxi line. Okay, we're going all the way to the end. All the way to the end. No, we don't need no de-icing. But let's just stop here quickly and then do our takeoff preparations. Okay, stop, 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 stop. Wow. Yeah, perfect, I would say, but a little bit over that. Parking, parking brake is on. Okay, so now we know what's uh, why you need these um, Taxi cameras. Um, okay, you can turn the weather radar on now. Oh, wait, I forgot the entire TCAS uh, rubbish. Goes to Tara. Turn on these guys. Take off. Strobe on. Yeah, no, we don't need it now. <sighs> well, then. Let's go to New York. Thank God, it's a very long runway. Okay, then let's. Ooh. And then flex. Airspeed's alive. Eighty knots. To correct you a little bit. Wow. V one. Rotate. I, uh, positive rate, gear up. Uh, can't see anything on these things. Uh, not if I... Lever climb? 
Let's turn on the autopilot. Oh, that doesn't work. Let's do it like that. Leaving Munich in a giant four-engined plane. Wow. Okay, let's see. Minus six degrees, so engine and wing anti-ice stays on for now. I'm not risking anything here, especially not now where we're getting into the clouds, but I would like to bring the flaps in. And now it's building speed. Bring the flaps in. Oopsie daisy. I'm always forgetting something. Okay, transition altitude. This goes to standard. How does this work here? Okay. Okay, now that we're here over the Atlantic and I think nothing interesting will happen during the next uh, three to four hours, let's talk briefly about long-range flying and uh, what I said about that in my comparison video about the two sims, X-Plane 12 and Microsoft Flight Simulator. On that video I said that there's no real long-range plane in a Microsoft Flight Simulator and I think that's not entirely true. A lot of people pointed out that the Airbus A310 is, of course, a long-range plane. So why did I gloss over the A310 the way I did? And if you look at my channel, then you may notice that I do a lot of real-world flights. And um, if you look on FlightAware or FlightRadar24 or any of that, and you search for flights that are done with an A310, you won't find anything. I think some airlines use an A310 still. I think Hawaii maybe, some freight. But this is very, very rare. Like there are two or three flights a week maybe. And then they are only going from, I don't know, Iran to Turkmenistan or something like that. If you look in flight aware flight radar for flights done with a triple seven over the 787 there are hundreds and thousands of flights or check out one of the live streams from an airport where they uh, yeah show planes landing and departing and all that you will see a whole lot of triple sevens you will see a whole lot of 787 you will see occasionally an a350 and the plane we are using here now is also a pretty rare plane but it's used in the flight that we're doing right now. It's used right now for that flight. 
Um, but the majority of long range flights are done with a triple seven, a seven eight seven, and I think seven six seven seven five seven all days. These are also in the mix at least. Yeah, not really, not really an an A three ten. So if you want to do historic flights, I think, or like retro flights or vintage flights or whatever, I think you can use the A three ten. But um, the way that I'm using the sim, like doing these real world flights, the A three ten isn't really usable for me. I'd rather have a yeah triple seven, an A three fifty, and so forth. But luckily, there's a lot of that stuff coming now. I said before i think that i kind of shy away from this heavy division 787 script because i read that some users have problems with it in terms of that it interferes with default aircraft now most of the vanilla aircrafts are shit but the tbm for example is really good someone pointed that out in the comments and i have to agree i use the tbm a lot and i shied away from that but i think now they matured enough i think i probably check out a the 787 heavy division and then we have a really good free long-range plane. I think the heavy division also are now working currently on a 7.878 and a 7.879. So let's see if this if this turns out to be good. Then yeah, why not? Why not? Like I mean, it's not not as not as cool as an A340, of course. But I love I love the Dreamliner. I love the Dreamliner. It's a really cool plane. As we know, PMDG also works on this on the triple seven. I don't know. I read a lot of bad things about the triple seven from Captain Sim, but maybe I give this one a go as well. But let's see how this uh, all develops. But again, my apologies for um, not mentioning the A three ten as a long range aircraft. Yes, I know it is. It's just that I'm really focused on planes on flights that exist in reality, and the A three ten doesn't exist in reality it's it's just it's basically non-existence for real world flights but yeah the a340 still is Okay, enter destination data. Let's check the weather. Well, okay, altimeter 10, 10, 10, 23. Temperature 11 degrees Celsius. Winds, ooh. Okay. 10, 23, 11 degrees Celsius. Wind is 260 edge 16. Ooh, ooh, ooh. This is all correct. Good. Uh, 1800 probably here. Let's type in 1800. Decelerate and then go. No. There's a dot that we have to chase. And then we are in descent. What's the um, distance? 116 miles. Wow. So flight time 8 hours and 8 minutes.
Ah, anyway. 10.000 feet, let's... Turn these guys on. Then we are done with that. Oh, okay, we get a signal. 16.3 miles. <laughs> wow, wow. We are there, almost. And... Oh, we're already on the smallest scale. Diesel 2200. Wow. Managed pretty good. And Disa, there we are. Then, flaps one. Drone spoilers arm, let's go for two. Cabin check. Flaps full, gear down. Uh, let's start with um, flaps two. Okay, then let's flaps three. Glide scope comes down, so I think it would be good time to capture the localizer. I have to grab the glide scope now. Okay, um, I don't know if any of that succeeded. Oh yeah, there we go. Okay. Okay, looking good. Are we on our ref speed? 150. 500. Yeah, close enough. Okay, I'm not gonna F up this landing by doing a manual one. We're going to um, delay that um, to another time when I have a lot more practice with this aircraft, but not after nine hours flight. Like the third time I'm flying it at all. Let's see. Yep. One hundred. Fifty. Forty. Thirty. Twenty. Ten. Retard. Drive. Reverse us out. Reverse us green. Okay, 70 miles, I mean 70 knots, manual braking, and oh, we can exit here already, nice, wow, cool, we made it, welcome to New York, yes, you are going to be very, very mad at me. Okay. Break on, please. <sighs> nice, we made it. Yes, cool. 
Drone spoilers in, flaps in, landing lights off, strobe off, beacon stays on. This goes to taxi. Okay, then let's see where are we going to park. Okay, park break on, is it? Ooh, it is. Neat. Okay, let's look how we are. Yeah, it's fine. Then let's say... Can already ask for a jetway. But of course, we first need to power down. Good, and let's turn these guys off. Let's get our ground. Very good. Then let's go to the external power. Then let's turn the beacon light off, the runway turn it off, the taxi light off. Is it off, please? Thank you. Um, then let's turn the weather radar off. No. Yep. PV standby. Okay, then let's turn off the engines. One, two, three, four. Okay, then let's turn all these guys off. Uh, turn the seatbelt signs off. So again we made it. Welcome to New York City everyone. Welcome to JFK. First of all, tip of the head to Lemina and Tolis. This is now, we are now here almost 10 hours. I didn't use any time acceleration. I didn't abort the flight in between and load, reloaded it or anything like that. I was like, it, I was straight 10 hours straight in the sim. I didn't have any freezes, I didn't have any crashes, I didn't have anything, any weird behavior. And I know this shouldn't be something that was worth mentioning, but we all know how it is these days. Games are getting pushed out in an early state, not really finished, crashing, having bugs and glitches and issues and all that. Don't forget that x 12K was released in December. So this is one thing. The other thing tip of the head to Tolis. I'm pretty spoiled by their aircraft. They are usually really, really good. And this is no exception. If you're looking for a long range aircraft and you're using the Tolis A320, the two Tolis A320 planes, like the planes from the A320 family, um, look no further. It's, it's brilliant. Also, by the way, tip of the head to, um, to Atrium liveries for giving us the, um, exact same, the exact livery that is used for this flight. So yeah, that's it for today. I see you in the next one. Take care and uh, tschüss.